Wiedeński Haras w Zaporizie, w Kijew. Guten Tag nach München. Good morning San Francisco. Dzień dobry Warszawa. Grüß Gott aus Wien. I would like to start my lecture by citing Aristotle, who told us that even known is known only to some. Today, we would like to discuss known and unknown risk factors associated with development of abdominal aortic aneurysm, and I call my lecture Volodis Lecture. Just to show you our experience uh, in surgery with aortic aneurysm, I chose one of my patients. This was a redo surgery after um, aortic aneurysm and bifurcation. She came with pseudo aneurysm of proximal anastomosis. And at that time, at this age, and a lot of risk, we had to do a lot of uh, extra anatomic bypasses to all visceral organs, you see kidneys, uh, small bowel, and she had even two hepatic arteries. And then we put it in um, stand, uh, which we call in our department voluntary procedure. The operation, as you know, we call hybrid operation. Uh, then they had to do even crossover bypasses and the lady survived two years. So I understood that many vascular surgeons who are watching my lecture, they understand that such procedures are not an uh, easy procedure. I have uh, to pay a tribute to my friend. You see us together in his native city, Kharkiv, 2010. First time I was 94 and I saw the first uh, lady 10 years after standing of thoracic aneurysm and when he went from us in April 2016, one of Swedish colleagues, Björk, wrote a fantastic article, The Four of the Giant Professor Vodos. So in September 2015, he delivered a memorable lecture to commemorate the 13 years anniversary of his great innovation I would like to cite only one sentence. Following his lecture, he was awarded an honorary fellowship by the society. And although the auditorium was overcrowded, everyone was focused on listening to his words. One might have heard a pin drop. Now let's start with uh, discussion on risk factor. We understand that uh, aortic aneurysm is a degenerative disease and there are a lot of risk factors. I'm not going to discuss today with you all, but I would like to stress that what some people still call hypovitaminosis D. For us is a hormone D3, it's immunomodulator, and I recommend to all young surgeon paper published 2013 by Australian surgeon Wong, European Journal of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery, explaining it. If you do not have any of this risk, but you have a hypovitaminosis D, as they call it, you can develop aortic aneurysm. And of course, sustained oxidative stress. Everybody is stressed, and we understand it as oxidative stress. It's well known, but I don't think that everybody understands endothelial dysfunction because here are two are molecules who are the most important. There's nitric oxide and superoxide. And at the end we will discuss so-called unknown, but they, as Aristotle was saying, they may be known, viruses and the role in development of abdominal aortic aneurysm in human. But let's start, you know, fundamental, uh, fundamental uh, knowledge. Science is telling us that life started on our planet about four, four and a half billion years ago. And so we have firstly micromolecules. And the first micromolecules, they were oxygen, CO, there was nitric oxide and hydrogen sulfide. At the end of 20th century, we understood that nitric oxide is not a poison, but it's the most important molecule in our system. One of my friends got Nobel Prize. 
And then we have a photosynthesis, but hydrogen sulfide is going to be synthesized in ocean. There is no sunny. And the first guy who described this, system, this, uh, this pathway, which we call chemosynthesis, was Sergei Venohradsky. He was a Ukraine scholarship in Zurich and in Strasbourg who described it. By the way, his mom was Skoropatska. Let's go now back to nitric oxide, because here we understand more. Here you see the guy in the middle, uh, during the meeting, 94, Moncada, he described 88, the reaction, how our cells are going to synthesize nitric oxide. So you need amino acid, L-arginine, you need oxygen, you need in the endothelial cells, endothelial constitutive endosynthase. In the brain, you need neuronal endosynthase, immune system, inducible NOS. But this reaction is going to start only if calcium is coming into the cells. So it's like a starter. But if you remember, we learned it 50 years ago that absorption of calcium is going to be controlled by vitamin D, as we call it at that time. This was one of biological functions known at that time. I cannot mention my friend who published 92 in Nature his paper on porphyrinic based microsensor, and we were able to measure nitric oxide biologically active in the single cell, of course, in the blood, in the vessel, in the tissue. 99, we have a one short publication, Neurochemistry. And based on this common research, we published fundamental work in circulation 97. John Cook, who was one of the known at that time researchers, uh, professor of Stanford University, wrote even editorial. If you have insufficiency of L-arginine, the system is deranged and uh, endothelial endosynthase becoming crazy and in spite to synthesize nitric oxide is going to synthesize superoxide, which are going to kill us. You know that uh, atherosclerosis is starting with oxidative stress. So you have to keep your body with L-arginine. I just remember you, you're a psycho. So if arginine is losing one atom oxygen, is going to be changed because of nitric oxide. You have a citrulline, citrulline taking again ni uh, nitrogen, and so that the whole you know, cycle is working for you 24 hours. Why it's important? Because you need 24 hours nitric oxide. Your heart and vascular system is working 24 hours. My question to the student, what is more important? Oxygen, nitric oxide, 99% is saying Oxygen is not correct, because if I'm taking oxygen away from heart, your heart is still going to beat for a few minutes. If I'm taking nitrogen oxide away, it's going to stop immediately. It's the same your brain, your long-term memory depends on nitric oxide. It's a neurotransmitter. We have some data with Professor Hornikevich, who described, by the way, L-DOPA and Marcus Parkinson. This is his fundamental work. We were measuring in people with uh, uh, Parkinson, Alzheimer, multiple sclerosis. We saw they have insufficient of nitric oxide. But at the end, we are talking about the immune system. You know, now because of the pandemic, everybody is talking about the immune system, immune system. All the cells you have in your immune system are killing bacteria and viruses using nitric oxide. It's a radical, it's a very active. So let's now talk about those viruses who are now so popular. We know it's a Latin word, means poison. And we know this is a not a cellular form of life on our planet. And they are absolute parasites. And life beings are required for viruses to reproduce. And viron is the only virus particle that is outside of a cell. And viron keep the information which is recorded in the form of organic molecule like DNA and RNA. And you have to know that we know only 0.001% of living organisms today on our planet. It's not a lot. But interestingly, human endogenous viruses occupied 9% of the human genome. So let's now talk about the viral genetic material. 
It was found, especially you know, in animals, cytomegaloviruses, herpes simplex 1, 2, in aortic wall, parainfluenza viruses, in biopsic fragments of aortic aneurysm. So what does it mean? Those findings, they supported speculations that viral agents may induce the development of aortic aneurysm or accelerate their progression. So it's well known now that modulation of immune response during persistent viral infection, I would like to stress this, during persistent viral infection is associated with modification of host cytokine production and signaling which can lead to the tissue damage. So we understand virus, poison, bad guy. And all virus diseases are associated with a lack of immune messengers, mediators. I just remember we have non-specific innate system with some messenger or in specific acquired immune system with other messengers. But at the end, immunomodulators decided. I once again stress nitric oxide and I would like to stress D3 immunomodulators, still people call it vitamin D. So what we now investigated, there are pattern recognition receptors and there is emerging evidence indicates that those pattern recognition receptors play important role in the formation and development of aortic, aortic aneurysm. However, the function and biology me mechanism of the most important family are not well understood. And here we have two representatives, toll-like receptor there are transmembrane proteins and are essential components of innate immune system. And toll-like receptor recognize double-stranded RNA produced during viral infection. It's very important. And the required receptor involved in the direct recognition of viral single-stranded RNA. They modulate interferon, nuclear factor, kappa B. So what we investigated in the paper which we published 2018 already in Journal of Vascular Surgery. What was the objective? We investigated the gene and protein expression of toy-like receptor 3, rig like 1 receptor, both as significant initiator and regulator of inflammatory response in aortic war and blood of aortic aneurysm patient and examined the relationship between the expression and immune response. Results, toyclar receptor 3 and RIC1 were constitutively expressed in both aortic tissue and blood samples from aortic aneurysm patients and healthy volunteers. In patients with aortic aneurysm, higher toyclar receptor 3 expression in aortic tissue than in blood was. RIC1 expression was higher in blood of patients with aortic aneurysm compared with healthy subject. And significantly higher level of interleukin 4 we saw in plasma in patients with aortic aneurysm than in healthy individuals. Conclusion was, this study suggests that RIG1 and Teuchla receptor 3 seem to important factors in pathogenesis of aortic aneurysm in human. The next paper we published in March 2020 in molecular biology, here we evaluated the Teuchla receptor 2 and Teuchla receptor 4 expression in aortic war and blood of patients with aortic aneurysm. Results, Teuchla receptor 2 and Teuchla receptor 4 mRNA expression were significantly higher in the blood of patients with aortic aneurysm than in blood of healthy volunteers. The expression of Teuchla receptor 2 and 4 transcript was high in the blood compared with aortic wall tissue of aortic aneurysm. And higher toll-like receptor 2 protein expression was observed in the aortic wall of aortic aneurysm patient compared with blood. A significantly higher concentration tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 4 in patient with aortic aneurysm than in healthy volunteers was noticed. Conclusion. This study suggests that Toyka receptor 2 may play a role in the inflammatory response in the aorta, both locally and systemically in patients with aortic aneurysm. And last publication we just published in April 2020 in Journal of Immunology, we determined here the frequency of Toyka receptor 2, 
3, 4 and 9, single nucleotide polymorphism, and investigated the association between polymorphism and risk of aortic aneurysm incidence. Results were the heterogeneous genotype of toy-like receptor 2, 20, 29 CT was more common in patients with aortic aneurysm than in healthy subjects. You see statistical difference. The wild-type genotype of toy-like receptor 3, 7 CR was associated with a threefold increased risk of hypertension. And heterozygous TR3, 13, 7, 7 CT were less common in patients with aortic aneurysm than in healthy subjects. So conclusion was the heterogeneous genotypes of toic receptor 2, 20, 29 and toic receptor 3, 13, 77 CT may serve as genetic biomarkers of aortic aneurysm incidence. So at the end, I want to remember um, Aristotle who told us even known is known only to some because I didn't tell you nothing new. We just show that in human we can fight viral genetic material. And at the end, I had to say what uh, our Ukraine astronaut Kadenyuk told us once. If our galaxy, where we are now, has a diameter one kilometer, so the, our planet and where we are now together with you had only one millimeter, and we are trying to find out all this natural law. Thank you very much.